Barbara Melhart and I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology of the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First Year Pharmacy Students. This um, class will be about microscopic lung structure and function. So what do our lungs look like? We have two lungs. The right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes and they're connected to the outside with airways. Um, the mouth is connected um, to the trachea and the trachea splits at the bifurcation to uh, bronchi. And these bronchi split again into uh, smaller airways. So how do you use the lungs to breathe? That is um, because the lungs are surrounded by two membranes. One membrane called the um, visceral membrane is connected to the lungs and the other membrane is called the parietal membrane um, and is connected to the diaphragm and the chest wall. These two membrane are connected together through a layer of fluid. Um, it's similar to when you have two plastic sheets and you put a little bit of water between them, then they really stick together. That's ha what happens with these two membranes too. And then um, you use uh, two muscles to breathe, the diaphragm and the muscles in between, those two, uh, in between these ribs called the intercostal muscles. And how does this work? Uh, the diaphragm is uh, in its relaxed state, a very long, big muscle. And when it contracts, it becomes smaller and pulls downward. And because the lungs are connected to this uh, diaphragm, the lungs will be pulled downward. And the chest wall, um, through the intercostal muscles, uh, goes upward and outward when these intercostal muscles contract. So the chest wall goes up and outward, the diaphragm goes downward, so the lungs are pulled apart. And because of this, the uh, air is being pulled into the lungs. When the diaphragm relaxes again and the intercostal muscles relax, the diaphragm pulls or pushes upward and the chest wall pushes downward and therefore the lungs uh, become compressed and push out the air. So then I have a question for you. Is it possible to breathe if you don't have your diaphragm? You can pause the video if you want to think about this. Um, and then there's the next question. When um, you don't have your diaphragm in your intercostal muscles, can you then still breathe? And the answer is on the next slide. The answer to both questions was yes. If you don't have your diaphragm, you can still breathe because you can use your intercostal muscles to get air into your lungs. Of course, it's not as efficient, but it still works. And if you don't have both, you can still get air into the lungs, though it's a bit of an inefficient process. And it's a, a similar way as um, frogs move air into their lungs. So this way of breathing is called frog breathing, also known as glossopharyngeal breathing. So how do frogs breathe? Well, frogs, uh, when they open their mouths, then uh, air moves in. They close their mouths again and then they move their tongue and jaw upward to make the uh, space uh, inside the mouth smaller. Then the pressure, of course, increases. And since the mouth is closed, the air cannot go out. It can only go downward into the lungs. And this type of breathing is also called positive pressure breathing. And it's a way of breathing that uh, can be used by people who are uh, who suffer from uh, specific muscle diseases that cannot use uh, the diaphragm or the um, intercostal, muscle, intercostal muscles anymore. Uh, they need, of course, a ventilator to breathe. Um, 
But when the ventilator doesn't work anymore, they still have this way of breathing uh, to prevent them from dying. And in this video, this woman shows you how she can breathe um, with glossopharyngeal breathing when her ventilator wouldn't work anymore. So what would happen if there would be air in between those two membranes? Well, when that happens, you, we call this a collapsed lung or a pneumothorax. And that can be seen here in this CT scan. CT, CT, CT scan is basically a, a cross section of a person. So a person is cut like this. So here you see the spinal cord. This is uh, the heart and here are the two lungs. So this lung is fully expanded. It completely uses the, um, the area it has been assigned to. Uh, but this lung is smaller than the area it could use. It's because there's air here. Uh, and because there's air here, the two membranes do not connect together anymore and this lung collapses. So question. Um, pneumothorax often occurs in young skinny males. Which of the two membranes is most likely damaged, the parietal or the visceral membrane? Well, the answer is on the next slide. Um, and there are two ways of getting air in between those uh, membranes, either from the outside or from inside, because the lung, of course, also has air. If the damage occurs from the outside, it's the uh, parietal membrane that is torn and this can happen during trauma for instance when you have a car accident and something pierces your um, uh, chest wall or during surgery um, but it can also happen from the inside and that usually is because of disease or uh, predisposition so young skinny males uh, and especially the ones that smoke uh, are at an increased risk of of tearing that visceral membrane from the inside. Uh, also uh, with certain lung diseases, um, a uh, very well-known one is emphysema that we'll talk about more in an, another video uh, that can um, lead to tears in the visceral membrane. But also uh, during whooping cough, there's such extreme coughing that was something you could show in one of the, uh, that you could see in one of the other online classes. This coughing is so extreme that you actually uh, damage the uh, visceral membrane and, and that can lead to a collapsed lung. So how do you treat a collapsed lung? Well, you want to get the air out here. So this is the collapsed lung. Uh, and if you can get the air in between the membranes out again, then the two membranes can connect together again and uh, expand the lung. If that doesn't happen, then you'll get a state which is known as atelectasis. Um, and um, that basically is a collapsed lung that cannot expand anymore. Um, atelectasis doesn't only occur with a pneumothorax, it can also occur uh, during bronchus obstruction. And bronchus obstruction is uh, another word for a clogged airway. And what happens then is that behind the uh, clog, uh, the um, lung can collapse. So distal from the obstruction, you can get a collapsed lung. And that is shown here. Uh, here we have an airway with uh, an alveolus attached to it. Um, and if, for instance, when you're eating peas and one of those peas goes the wrong way and gets into the lung and into an airway, it might block this airway. Uh, so this is the air side. Air can still get to here, but it cannot go any further. So this area doesn't get expanded anymore and will collapse. And 
if that happens too long then the tissue will uh, stick together and it won't be uh, possible to expand it anymore and then you'll end up with uh, something which looks like this a, uh, a collapsed part of the lung for more info on what the lung looks like microscopic microscopically please continue with the next class